hello, this is my Christmas video for this year. I almost wasn't going to do one last year. I think I showed a whole bunch of Christmas candies and chocolates and sweets. I'm going to do one like that this year. Hopefully it won't be as, you know, boring. <laughs> Got this bird here. Little live pets. Uh, I'm really scared. I'm going to completely take over this video. Uh, for that fact that I'm it just said. Yeah, Talking Tom's back out. Many people said, where's Talking Tom? Well, he was severely injured last Easter after a couple of explosions, and we're going to get into blowing stuff up. That's our first center we're going to blow up. And what is interesting in this video, I'm going to use uh, my wife's iPhone 6 Plus. It's the one that bends like a banana. Ours hasn't bent yet. Um, I'm very curious how the 240 frames a second slow motion works on that in seeing this center get blown to smithereens. And... That bird's going to have to be turned off because it's going to completely take over this video. Hey Santa, I've heard Christmas time's a real blast! Oh yeah! Santa is down! Well, I'm coming for a post blast and also I'm just hoping I'm not burning my wife's phone here. Man, I'd be crucified. That was a Christmas gift for her. It'd be very secondhand if I did that. Hey, that was weird. It was almost like a Star Wars sort of chocolate Santa, wasn't it? It uh, had a, a bit of spark in that one. Um, that's the destruction. I haven't messed with this yet. That has happened to this packaging. Uh, there were two sorts of explosives in there. There was one to basically shock the chocolate, which had been on ice. Uh, remembering it's summertime here, so everything gets melty very fast. And I think the shock uh, explosive has opened up this. Um, the other one was obviously a flash. Uh, the people who used to employ me would say, geez, Leo, that was too much flash. Well, I think George Lickers would have been very happy with that. A little bit of the chocolate did creep onto the ground. These few bits here, a lot of it came forward. The GoPro was there. I haven't looked at the GoPro footage yet. I looked at the iPhone. Um, it's very slow motion. I could, that's all I could say. It's interesting, there's a bit of chocolate at the back here, up near my lovely decorations there. There was the explosive Play-Doh, that's a very important part of all this. Uh, without that, this doesn't work. Um, yeah, so um, one chocolate Santa is um, basically history. I better add this bit of educational learning piece in here, or people will flag this for having fun. When explosives work, they always tend to find the weakest part or weakest way to get out of things and maybe here's an example you can see here it's almost cracked through here the chocolate's melting here because it's just been under explosive force and it's also summertime here and if we turn it over that's the area between Santa's face and the top of Santa's hat uh, so that's the way explosives work and it's starting to look like a very sad version of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and I know you guys love it when I blow things up hey let's blow up one of these Kinder Sanders come on let it blow <laughs> Oh yeah, Thana, sometimes you scare me. I tell you what, I bet you Talking Tom's got a bit of a smarting feel on him after that blast. The secret to doing these is basically have the chocolate as cold as you possibly can. Um, it's starting to come out of being cold now because it's been under a little bit of very quick thermal shock. That was the chocolate there that was down on the ground. I mean, it really is as chocolate everywhere. Uh, it's quite a disruptive explosion. It's the same sort of thing I did with those Kinder Bunnies in the Canning Song and the Kinder... Christmas surprise is in there. <gasps> should we take a look at it? Oh, what do you reckon? Before we see the surprise, I should show you where I shot Santa. It was actually the back of the head. There was the hole there. Oh, very nasty, aren't I? Anyway, let's take a look at the surprise. I haven't looked at these ones yet. I wonder what I've got. Oh, what is that thing? It looks like Plucker Duck, to be honest. If you're in Australia, you'll know what Plucker Duck was. I miss Plucker Duck, actually. It looks like, I think they're decorations, aren't they? The Christmas ones. What is that thing? Um, yeah, it's a, what, Christmas duck, or something. Someone out there will know. That's the series of Christmas Kinder Surprises to collect this year. I think the one you'd all be wanting probably is Santa and Little Kinder Eggman. They're very popular. 
and now I've done the right thing. I've actually made this duck up. Uh, it's holding a star, as ducks do. Okay, guys, what do you want to do next? You want to take a look at that fantastic M&M biplane, or do you want to blow up another Kinder Santa? I'm listening to you. What do you want? The biplane or blow up a Santa? Okay, I'm hearing you loud and clear. Good night, Santa. And because Talking Tom's feeling so festive, why don't we sit him right in the middle of shot this time, and we're going to have Santa right in his lap there. Ooh, wow, Talking Tom, you're going to have a blast. And to keep in the very festive feeling here, we'll wrap a few Christmas lights around Santa. So when he blows, at least he'll be able to see where he's going. Hey, Santa, that's not Christmas lights. That's detonating cord. Ooh, that was a Christmas surprise, Santa. Ooh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, another Christmas Kinder Santa is down. Uh, that flew off. All the stuff you see here basically flew past camera. I did have a peek at the iPhone footage. It looks pretty impressive. Maybe very grainy. Um, the lights here, it looks like they're still working. It's amazing, isn't it? Uh, the charge is actually down, down here, a different spot this time. No headshot for Santa. Uh, talking Tom took a bit of a, a dive backwards, but he's well adjusted to, to doing this sort of work. Uh, it's very interesting, isn't it? Blowing things up. It's uh, my background before I was stuffing around on YouTube. This is what it did for my career work. Would you believe that? Mm, I know you don't, but believe me, it was a fantastic job. Oh, it still is because I sort of um, <clears throat> still do it, sadly. Okay, you heard Talking Tom. Let's take a look at the surprise. Well, I'll be honest here, I do want the Eggman. I bought a whole ton of these, but we'll probably never get to opening these. What is that there? It looks like some sort of mouse. Do you remember that one in the series? Uh, I didn't. <laughs> what is that? Looks like, I don't know, some sort of rodent or something, isn't it? Mm, it's a strange one. Well, in the series, it's that guy there. Uh, there's instructions on the back here. I better put him together, eh? Well, after a bit of a daddy fiddle, uh, it's, I don't know, some sort of weird star patterned helicopter thing. The mouse is looking up at the star. Uh, it ties into the tail there. Um, can anyone explain the mystery behind that? Is that like a European thing that I don't understand? It's a weird one. Um, yeah. Thank you, Kinder. Okay, let's take a look at this M&M biplane called M&M High Flyers. I've actually got a fair bit of M&M merchandise. This is a hanger, or well, the box is in the shape of a hanger. It's quite nice, it's sad, I'm going to have to lose the box. I mean, I can't have the house being totally cluttered up with this stuff. Uh, I do use this sort of stuff as eye candy, no pun intended. Uh, you see it behind the videos when I'm making videos inside. There's instructions on how this bird works on the side of the box and it's probably going to be a bit of a beast to unbox as this stuff always is um looks like i have to come and do some daddy snips in there i better attempt to get a snip shot because that seems to be oh, the thing people want to see now i mean how weird is that oh yeah and now comes this wondrous looking aircraft even inside the box it's well detailed, there's an oil spill there, there's a spanner there, and underneath the floor there is a packet of sugar. Well I better show you how it works, you lift up the yellow guy here to load your M&Ms in. And believe me guys, I do not eat this stuff anymore. I shouldn't say too much against it because I'm trying to, you know, help them out here. Put the yellow guy back on the wing. The dispensing area is down on the lower wing here. And apparently if I turn the propeller, we'll get some dispensing happening, we hope. Oh, here we are. Plus you get some nice propeller action. And I can assure you, I will not be eating those. I put them back in the bag and they go basically straight in the bin, as far as I'm concerned. I do have a fair bit of this stuff. It's the first time I've seen the biplane. Um, I've got a lot of the smaller things that they do. Nice detailing on this with the M&Ms as wings. Uh, the guys look fantastic, like the old wing walkers back in the good old days. And the 
The red guy's looking very fancy. Yeah, I'm not into the M&Ms as a thing to eat, but I do really enjoy uh, that sort of merchandise. Okay, ready for takeoff. Clear prop. Give it a spin. Oh yeah, do you remember the hot rod dispenser from last year's Christmas Joy? It's been seen in lots and lots of videos in the background during 2014. Best thing is, there's actually another one that's come along. Oh yeah, that's a blue hot rod in there and it looks super cool. On the back of the box talks about pushing down the arm there to dispense the candy. Or sweets or lollies depending on what part of the world you're in. There's some M&Ms there, which will be thrown away, but this is the part that I want. Going for a fancy unboxing shot here, like through the window. I'm going to come into a daddy snip right there. The art of snipping. So what's better than just one M&M hot rod dispenser? It's having two. They look fantastic as a pair, don't they? And again, I should just show you how it works. You better see to believe it. Oh yeah, that comes down. And you put your M&Ms in there. Mr. and Mrs. M&M. I wonder if they've got names. They look the same in these two cars and what is interesting is I learned during the year because this was in the house all the time my son loved getting it and playing with it and it's actually survived so the wheels haven't come off you know bits haven't broken off which is very important um, it's actually nice to know but this is a fairly robust little toy because my boy tends to be fairly rough on toys try not to giggle there like how I'll get these guys to drive off without crashing Okay, see ya. And in comes some Christmas stocking joy in the form of Peppa Pig and Thomas the Tank. Let's take a look at Peppa Pig first. So I did have a sneak peek at a Thomas the Tank one that I did purchase. I was underwhelmed. Maybe I'm a bit old for this sort of stuff. There's a whole bag of um, jelly beans there so you can be stuck on the roof after you've been on a massive sugar high. Ooh, look at that. There's some sort of little puzzle there. We'll look at the toys next. Just get this out. Another bag of jelly beans, I suppose you can share when there's two bags. And there's some more boogie down there. I think that's all that's in that bag. Let's take a look at the toys. But check your stockings carefully, boys and girls, because hiding inside is a whole bunch of Peppa Pig stickers. Who can name all those characters? I can't. Well, okay, first off, we've got a Peppa Pig, it's a badge. The next thing we've got is something I think you stick on the end of your pencil and then you blow it to keep you entertained when you're doing maths. Then there's a hanger thing that you clip on your bag there. Is that Pepper and George or Daddy and... I'll lose it, won't I? And then there's a little puzzle here <clears throat> that will keep you absolutely entertained for hours. And as for these here, my advice is throw them straight in the bin. Next up, we've got the world famous and most endearing Thomas the Tank. I'm sure there'll be plenty of children who'll be getting these under the tree or on the fireplace, wherever you put these things. <gasps> Ooh! Bag of sweets. Looks like the same sort of deals in here, doesn't it? But they've been Thomasized, if that's a word. More sweets and more boogie. And hiding down inside here, again, is. Yay! Some Thomas and Friends stickers. Real McCoy ones. I've so often seen knockoffs. And hopefully that there is telling me this is the real McCoy. Oh, someone's got fireworks outside and it's not me this time. That's a first. Well, here's a badge here. Sadly, it's been printed off to one side a bit. You can see the licensing info there. Can you see something which is across all this stuff that um, you don't see in the toys? Who can work that one out? There's that thing there for the end of your pencil. There's a hanger thing there for your bag. Sort of cool. Very cool rendition of Thomas. And there's that puzzle there that can keep you entertained for seconds. You notice the thing that's common across all this stuff? Even the artwork on the bag here. The white. That bit of white detailing is on all this stuff, even the stocking. There it is there, uh, but you just don't see it on the toy, and that's a Thomas and Friends mystery. And in the Thomas bag, let's not forget the candy, sweets, whatever you want to call it. It's a shame that it's not white and blue, or red and blue or something. Uh, it looks like the Peppa Pig beans to me. 
Tis the season for advent calendars. Obviously, this is a Thomas and Friends one, but I don't think what's inside relates much to Thomas and Friends. Maybe clue is the fact that it just says 24 festive milk chocolate shapes. There is a jigsaw puzzle of sorts to do on the back here, but let me just open this up and we'll take a look inside. And I'm doing a bit of an advent calendar cheat here. If you want to see what it's all about, you can open up an end and you can slide out the whole month worth of goodies. Well, after a fair bit of fighting, I finally got the chocolates out. But from what I can see there, there's nothing really relating to Thomas and Friends. Mind you, there's a few curious ones here that I want to show you. Let's take a look at this one here. Mm. Now, to me, that looks like a penguin from Club Penguin. What's your thoughts there? This looks pretty cool, this one. It's a gingerbread man. Let's take a look at another one. So one there, Santa. Good look at Santa. Don't look at Santa, it's just not worth looking at. There we go. And we'll take a look at one more. What do you think? Something a bit unusual. This one here is unusual. What is that? A little, um, is that a nutcracker? Hmm, not sure. Now what's really unusual is there's a set of chocolates done by the same people that did the advent calendar and they actually have Thomas and Friends themed shapes. So I sort of wonder why can't they put those shapes into the advent calendar? We'll take a look at what's in here. You know the characters, I don't have to spell it out to you, but what you'll see is there's actually not much variety get, getting on strangely. There's one Toby in there, a milk chocolate one. And, oh, <laughs> that vest all fallen out, but I'm not doing it again. And they keep falling. Uh, yeah, because I've got two of them, I can go back to this one here. Ooh, a bit of a zoom in shot there, but edit that one out. Strange, isn't it? Um, it's interesting, this artwork is different to last year. This, last year's didn't have this um, golden colour on it. I'm sure I've actually got one in here, but um, I don't know what was different. Uh, I, I think the same chocolate is on the inside. Yeah, it's a strange one. We love Thomas the Tank and some will love Peppa Pig. Here's a box of chocolates, Peppa Pig themed, or is it? Hmm. Lots of beauty shapes. Let's take a look at what beauty shapes entails. Hmm. What is that? Now I know girls look at my channel because I look at the data. In fact, over 50% 50, 50 of my viewers is female. Hmm, don't know what else to say there. I suppose it's lipstick. Um, mirrors, I don't know. Brushes, who knows? You can tell me. And one thing I like about these chocolates is that they are not made in China. They are made in the UK. And what I always say is, if you see chocolate made in China, uh, you just steer clear of it. I just don't trust chocolate from China. Okay, I know it's not Christmas, but it's something which is pretty close to Christmas, and I didn't really get into Halloween this year. Uh, these are Eminem, those fan guys, whatever they're called, they, you know, they, they blow a bit of a wind. What are they called? Halloween candy fan? There's Eminem's in here. But I've got a ton of these. I'm actually, one thing I've really been collecting is these guys. Uh, strangely, I didn't see the Christmas ones this year, which is unusual. Uh, here is the girl. She's blowing a kiss at you. If she could blow a fan. Fan's bent the wrong way. There she goes. She got a jack-o'-lantern there. I was going to do the old eye candy joke, but I think we've worn that one out already, haven't we? Yeah. I like these things. You know, they're not too expensive. And they're great eye candy. <laughs> I can't help myself, can I? And here's the red guy. A jack-o'-lantern as well. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I'm not sure if you see these where you live. It's not really a Christmassy thing, but, you know, I suppose going back to schools after Christmas, well, it is in Australia. These are little sandwich bags, Angry Bird themed, and this is licensed. Um, I've, got a, I've got a feeling Angry Bird's going to be around for a very, very long time. It's been around long enough to be basically part of the fabric of life. I know some people will be very scared about hearing that. And um, let's just take a look at Red here. There's a couple of different birds in these bags. My son loves these. I mean, he just loves it. Um, yeah. There's Red. There's Bomb in there. I don't know how many Reds are there. Quite a few Reds. Oh, let's just get out Bomb, mate. Eh? <clears throat> there's Bomb. It's cool. I like it. You know, and there's also a pig in there too. 
get the pig out too, shouldn't we? Because he's like, ah, but you never showed us a pig, Leo. Yeah, you're not a good YouTuber. You didn't show us a pig. Well, there's the minion pig. Okay, Merry Christmas from the minion pig. Oh, I just found another bird here, Matilda. Got to show Matilda. I got a bit of a mess here now. Um, what was a bit unusual uh, this Christmas time? I didn't see much Angry Birds Christmas themed stuff like I saw last year. Um, maybe Angry Birds are on the way out. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Anyway, let's finish off this video. Let's crack open another one of these glorious Kinder Surprise Santas and. People said, where's Mr. Hammer been? Hey, he's always not far away from where I am. And what I might try and do is get Mr. Hammer's wondrous workings in the slow motion on this uh, iPhone. One that bends like a banana. Forgotten its name. Well, this Santa says, ho, ho, Hammer! Oh, yeah! Busted! Oh yeah, another stark reminder, you just do not mess with Mr. Hammer. But the secret here, like when I blew them up, is they were basically frozen. I needed that chocolate to be really brittle to get that nice effect when the hammer hits it. It was sort of curious, the surprise insert split open, but let's check out what we've got. I've got gloves on because uh, the chocolate is starting to melt. Remember, I'm in the heat here. I'm not in the winter like you are, or well, the bulk of you are. That's one part of Santa. Um, there's obviously a thing there too, because it's a Christmas tree decoration. Let's get out the other half of Santa. Looks like a fairly simple one to assemble here. Santa's bum goes into Santa's stomach. And uh, there we have. And he's got actually a little, listen carefully, he's got a jingle bell. So that's sort of a nice, cute one. That's one that I'm after. And just a reminder of the Kinder Joy, there was that strange mouse peeping up through the stars there there was the duck or whatever it is catching a star star of Bethlehem or something and there was Santa who's got a little Santa bell and he wrecks everything else while he's ringing his bell well there you go I had to have the Santas on ice remembering it's stinking hot where I am and it's the only way to keep them alive uh, sadly because of YouTube these days long videos don't work for me so the Santas have got to stay on ice well, there's a bit of a closer look at the decorations that I've purchased to make a Christmas video this year, which nearly didn't get made. This stuff came from Aldi in Australia, the Nutcrackers as well, but the light tree here and these things, which are actually pretty cool looking, came from Kmart Australia. That was from Tajay in Australia, and so was that one, and the Kinder Sanders, well, you can sort of pick them up anywhere. Reject Shop, Woolies, everywhere, I see them in Australia. And interestingly, the ones that I didn't see was the large Kinder Eggs. Um, gone. I only saw the Kinder Sanders. But mind you, I actually didn't see much merchandise at all. It's really been slack this year. And don't get me started, there were no Christmas Garfields down at McColl's, and that had me really crying. Well, I better leave this video off here um, and wish you a Merry Christmas. That is, if you celebrate Christmas, I know not everyone celebrates Christmas. Uh, it's hot here. I don't know if you can see there's a bit of sweat on me. I uh, hope you're not too cold where you are. Uh, I know most of my viewership comes from the Northern Hemisphere, which would be in winter time now. But of course there's some people in Australia who watch me and some people, I know South America, New Zealand. What else is in the Southern Hemisphere? South Africa? hope I haven't left anywhere out. Uh, I just hope I haven't burnt my wife's iPhone. That's what I bought her for Christmas. As fancy as it is it's actually i think the slow motion and that's not bad but hey you tell me what you think about it okay thanks for your viewership this year i much appreciate it i had a pretty tough year on youtube during 2014 i hope that doesn't happen to me again in fact i had two the two previous years have been pretty tough uh when you have time out and you've got problems with your channel it's not much fun uh youtube starts to become very boring in that situation but nevertheless, you know, I fought it out and I got a victory in the end. But boy, oh boy, did it take time. Have a great holiday season, Christmas if you celebrate it or whatever you do. Anyway, thanks for watching and bye for now.